Bandwidth for this podcast is brought to you by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Oh, sorry. I was just kind of... I was wrapping on myself around an object. Okay. Because that's what I'm going to do. You're going to do, yeah. He's yes. going to show you yeah. how to take text okay. and wrap it around an object. And But yeah. I'm actually constrained by this by this umbilical cord, yeah. cord. Welcome back to MacBook Studio, by the way. I'm just being silly. <laughs> so so here's what we're going to do, right? We're doing some motion right. again. And uh, what we want to do is wrap text around an object. Exactly. Kind of a 3D kind of kind of thing here. Right. So um, let's dive right in and see why, why this might be useful. You might have a logo, for example, and you want your text to, to spin around the logo. Yeah, a lot of people of... have emailed us about that. They, they want to be able to take text and yeah. you know, put it and wrap it around a you know, vehicle, an object, a, a globe, you know, globe, logo, whatever. anything. Yeah. yeah. So here's a basic idea. So just for demonstration purposes, I've created a circle just using the shape tool. And uh, you can see here I've filled it with a gradient and I've got a little gradient here. In fact, the, the easiest way to adjust the gradient really is to right click and choose the edit gradient uh, tool here to kind of get the kind of gradient you want. Um, so I did that and then I've got some text. And if you're curious, this is called Octan Team, this particular font that I'm using right here. So here's the basic thing you need to do. The first thing is in the text inspector, you want to go to the layout pane there. And in the layout controls, there's a layout method. And type is the default, and it's what you use almost all the time. But there are a bunch of other options in here. In particular, we're going to go to the one called path. And we've used this for another tutorial, but we're going to use this in a different way this time. So path, it's hard to tell what happened here, but if you double click on the text, you'll actually see control points that you can move around uh, to change yeah. it, you know, to change how the text is shaped. Uh, it takes a second to update there. You just have to move the mouse. I don't really want that type of path. That's a freeform path. What I want to do here, I'm going to hit Shift S. Oops. I'm going to hit Escape just to get out of that. I'm going to go down in the inspector to these path options. So once you choose path as the layout method, you've got a bunch of path options that become available. And by default, the path shape is an open spline, but we have a bunch of options for what that shape looks like. And I'm going to choose a circle because I want the text to wrap around something, okay? It's going so to be choose circle. Nice. And it does something like that by default, which in, in and of itself is kind of interesting. I could, you know, <laughs> that fits your, it on here. So you're, you're grading it perfectly. Uh, yeah, I did not, I did, I, no, I did not plan that. Yeah. Wow. But let's say we want it on the outside. If I could just increase the radius of that circle, um, and then you do have to reposition things a little bit. Uh, but I could go a little bigger and. I could wrap the text around kind of a 2D wrap around, like something like that, okay? And then to move it, um, there's a path offset. So you can change where that text starts and stops. You might want to do something more like that, right? Uh, so that's a path offset to kind of set it up. So that's cool in and of itself. And you can animate this with keyframes or behaviors to actually move along this path, continue to rotate. But we want more... I bet more... a text sequence behavior would animate that around there. Well, or just it would animate the individual letters right. for sure. But this path offset thing itself, you could animate this slider, see, to make it you know, spin around, right? So I could just use that. But I want more of a 3D look. This is just totally flat. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press Q which gives me my Adjust 3D Transform tool. It's this tool right down here, okay? So instead of the Select tool, it's this 3D Transform tool. And then I'm gonna hold the Shift key down, and there's a, these three little circles here that are rotation handles. Hold the Shift key down and drag up on this one, which allows me to lay that completely flat. flat. Yeah, so now I've laid the text down. You know, it was like, it's like a, a card, and I just laid it flat down. Now you need the letters to stand up. Yeah, now I need the letters to stand up. So that's kind of the key part. So what we're going to do for that... So there must be a checkbox for that somewhere. Uh, no? I don't know. I don't know if there's a checkbox for that. But if I go to the <laughs> Properties Inspector, there's Rotation. And if I look at the... When I think about the text standing up, if I take the X Rotation... Oh, that's the whole thing. Sorry. Let's go back to the text itself. And... Now I have to remember for a second. I messed you up. I messed you up. Didn't <laughs> yeah, I? yeah. Sorry. So here we go. That, this, there's several places to adjust rotation. If you adjust it in the properties inspector, it'll mm -hmm. adjust the rotation of the whole text object. Right. But if you go to the format, there's advanced formatting options, and there's rotation in here. So if we open up rotation by clicking the disclosure triangle, we've got X, Y, and Z. So if I move X, check it out. See how that? I'm just making that yeah. X text stand up. Yeah. So if I set it to 90 degrees. Uh, now I've got this text standing up around that circle. And uh, 
The problem is you might notice uh, we're actually seeing all the text. Let's go back to the layout and play with that offset again. And the text is all completely in front of that circle. It's not in front and behind. Yeah, it's not wrapping like Right. In fact, let's increase the radius to make that really obvious. Right. So check yeah. it out. It's not wrapping around that thing at all. No. Let's actually move it over a little bit to the left too. Fail. Yeah. Well, not just not there yet. Okay. There is no failure. It's just <laughs> not, not being quite there yet. So the problem, the reason for that is, um, is that layers can't interact with each other unless they're in 3D groups. Ah. Yeah, so that's, gotta, that's a thing here. You gotta turn on the 3D camera or something. Well, right? you could add a camera, but before even, you don't need to have a camera. So I wanted to show that you don't need to have a camera. So this group is a 2D group. Mm -hmm. So I, from the group, from the object menu, I could choose to make this a 3D group. Control D, or even easier, is this little icon right here. If I click on it, we'll make it a 3D group. Now, I don't know if you can see the difference when I'm doing that, how the text is actually now disappearing behind there. In fact, to make it a little more obvious, let's rotate the whole text this way. And then let's select the text and go back to that path offset. And now, see, we can see it's definitely going behind yes. and coming in front, yeah. okay? So now it's definitely working the way we want it to. And now, so if we want to animate that, however, well, check it out. Text is not is reading backwards, it right? Is. It's like it's totally backwards. So all we need to do for that is back in these path options, there's an inside path checkbox that determines whether the, path ro the text rotates on the outside of the path or the inside. So if we choose inside, and then we use this path offset, we can see it reads correctly, right? So check it out. I'm just gonna take this path offset, I'm gonna right click on it, right on the word itself, add parameter behavior, and I'm gonna choose a rate parameter behavior. And immediately in the behaviors inspector, we see this rate pop forward. I'm just gonna give it a rate of, I don't know, minus 10. We'll see if that, what kind of speed that is. There we go. So now it's animating forever uh, around that object. Without a single keyframe. Without a single keyframe, yeah. And maybe I want to move the whole thing down just a little bit. So super easy to get the text to wrap around. And again, it's while it's playing even, we can go in and say, oh, I want the radius a little bit bigger, or I want to move it down or over, or you want to change the font, anything you want to do, you can just do while it's playing to kind of get it exactly what you want. And the key is, is the uh, 2D group to a 3D group. Yeah, yeah. Now you could add a camera. For instance, if I just, if I just click the camera icon here, it'll add a camera in which will allow us to kind of rotate around this whole oh, thing. Oh, no, yeah. And they can see yeah. your... Uh... Now you can see that guy thing's flat, okay? <laughs> yeah. um, You're so running a that long guy, con yeah. with your yeah. graphic here. Yeah. <laughs> now, there's some things you can do about that. There's a point-at behavior you can sure. put on that circle, so it always points at the camera. It looks like a sphere. Right. Uh, but if you do want to have that 2D look, you know, you can move the camera around and have another look at it. Right. But a, a quick and easy way to take text and wrap it around any kind of object that you want. I think that's fantastic. Very, very useful too. Now you have a tutorial on uh, working with text and people can learn how to do I, I more do. of this Yeah, kind of we stuff. do a little more of this with a globe and I do 3D with text uh, shadows because you can add lights and shadows and a lot of stuff. We don't have quite enough time to go in here, but I have a tutorial that goes really, it's mastering text in motion. So it goes in depth into all kind of creating, styling, animating. Fantastic, text fantastic. Motion. So you can find that at rippletraining.com along with a bunch of other stuff, plugins, and uh, you can follow us on Twitter and Facebook. And uh, thanks, Mark for showing us this awesome technique in motion. And we thank you for watching Mac Breaks Studio. See you next time.